Welcome this morning to the Word of Faith Fellowship radio program. It's an honor to be with you again, to bring you the Word of God, to share testimonies, to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it's such a wonderful time on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays from 8.30 a.m. to 9 a.m. WCAB. And we just, as a church, are so excited about the radio programs and what God's doing through the programs, the good reports we're hearing about those that are listening, and it's just such a blessing to us. Today, I'd like to share with you what God has given to us through His Word about weddings, about getting married. Years and years ago, over on nearly 40 years ago, our pastors, Sam and Jane Whaley, and uh, ministers and leadership in our congregation and our church members began to seek God about weddings. God, what is your will? What is your way? We wanted to know that everything we do, we do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ in praise and honor to him and do it according to the word of God. Because we know that in Mark chapter 7, it tells us very clearly, Jesus said that the traditions of men will make the word of God of no effect. And we don't want that. A tradition of man is something that man has engineered. Man came up with it. It's man's idea. And many times these demonic powers try to come in to the lives of human beings, to to get them away from the ways of God, pull them into areas of sin and areas taking them away from God. And we found out that there were many traditions in weddings and getting married that we were not aware of. We began to search, we began to research, we began to investigate what is God's will. We know that there are customs that people do, like throwing of rice. Why do people do that? Like throwing the bouquet, giving the bouquet away. Well, most of the research said that that was a custom done for good luck. And we know that the Bible condemns luck. There's no place in the New Testament Christianity or in the word of God that tells you to have luck or have good luck. That is a tradition of men and it is witchcraft. There is no power other than God. And if you're in another kind of power, it's demonic and it came from the demonic world and it's of the devil and it's not of God. So we found out that these customs, what about walking the bride up the aisle and her father giving her away? We found out that that's not in the word of God. The Bible says that a man shall leave his mother and a woman leave her home and the two shall become one flesh. And then we find out that is in the book of Genesis and that's also in the book of Matthew where Jesus said it. God began with that in the book of Genesis, his will for male and female, and he made it very clear to us. And we understand that God joins families. That bride and groom, that husband and wife, they don't cut their family off and, and, and no more. They, God joins the families and it's a miracle in our weddings where the families come, the families are joined together. And it's so powerful as they witness the miracle of two human beings, a male and a female becoming flesh as one. Jesus said the two shall become as one. And in Matthew chapter 19 and verse 4, Jesus says, Have you never read that he who made them male and female from the beginning made them male and female? The word of God is very clear about that. There's no question. There's no question about it. The word of God for thousands of years has stood the test of time. And it's very true. He made male and he made female. And it says, for this reason, because he, he ordained that a man and a woman, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be united firmly and joined together with his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. Now here Jesus is, and this, this great throng of people, and the Pharisees come and ask him this question. Now, remember, the Pharisees are the ones that are the most knowledgeable in the word of God. They're the ones that are the most knowledgeable in the things of God. And Jesus said, have you never read this? Do you not know this, that from the beginning, God 
ordained this. God set it in order. God set it in place. Many people call the book of Genesis the book of first things because so much comes forth in the book of Genesis to lead and guide our lives and gives us understanding about the ways of God. And then he goes on in verse six, and Jesus said, so they are no longer two, but one flesh. And look what he says, what therefore God has joined together, let not man put asunder or separate them. And right there, we understand that a marriage is for a lifetime. It's for a lifetime. It's for an entire lifetime. And we are a generation that has the horror of divorce and it's rampant in our country it's rampant in other places of the world why is that why is it that there's so much divorce so many broken homes so many children that go through the pain and agony you know what happens to a man and woman a husband and wife when they are divided and they divorce the children think of what the children feel when something like that happens And it's heartbreaking and it's sad. And only through repentance and the blood of Jesus Christ can he heal you from that pain and agony of a divorce. And God wants to make your life anew and bring your life into his will. And God does that through healing, through repentance. And it's it's wonderful that we at the Word of Faith Fellowship have seen so many lives that have been destroyed by divorce come to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ, repent of their sins, and God's restored them. And today, they're married, they have children, and they're serving the Lord Jesus Christ together. And we're going to find out in a few minutes that God hates divorce. He hates it. So God has given us things that from His Word that are so precious and special. Now, we know that the Bible talks all about songs, hymns, and spiritual songs. From the Old Testament to the book of Psalms, through the New Testament, singing to each other in psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Well, through our pastor, Jane, God brings a song of the Lord. And the Bible talks about God giving his people a song of the Lord. And for each couple that's been married at the Word of Faith Fellowship, God has given them a song. They are so prophetic. They are so powerful. Sung, the couples uh, sing the song, and also Caleb and Jessica, my daughter and son, son-in-law, sing the songs of the Lord to the married cu- couple, and the couple sings with them also many times. It's about their life. It's about the direction of their life. It's about where they've come from, what's happening to them today, and it's about where they're going. And each song is so individual, so special to meet the needs of that couple that's getting married. It's so powerful. And we have many visitors that come to our weddings at the Word of Faith Fellowship. We have, we have friends in our community that tell us, when you have a wedding, please contact me because I want to come. I don't even care if I know them or not. I want to come to the wedding because they're so special. And God does such a work and the presence of God and the power of the Holy Spirit to do a work in God's people is present among his people. And many people say, we want to come and see this. And it's so powerful because we all know that on the day a couple gets married, we will witness a miracle. It is a miracle for two to become one and become one flesh in the Lord Jesus Christ for the will and the purpose of God. They want to serve Jesus together forever. They want to raise their children in the word of God and serve Jesus. That's what they want to do. This is so strong in the hearts of our our couples that come to get married. And it's so special where God brings that work of the Holy Spirit and that song of the Lord that joins their hearts, joins their souls, and joins them for the will of God for the rest of their life. And that's something so special that God's done in our weddings. And we have praise and worship unto our God. And the couple shares their testimonies to the people at the wedding, what Jesus has done in their life, what God delivered them from, where they came from, and they declare to the people of God, to the congregation in the midst of God's people, they declare the miracle working power of God and where they want to walk with their life. 
and it is so powerful. We all get to know them in a new place and, and be able to pray for them, for them to walk with Jesus for the rest of their life. And it's a foundation in God. That's what our pastors have taught us, that if your foundation is wrong, you will not make it. Remember what Jesus said about the man who built his house on a rock? When the storm came, and the storms are going to come in our life, the Bible promises that, but when the storm came, that house that was built on the rock, Jesus Christ, did not fall. But the other house that was built on sand, it didn't make it. And the fall of that house, the Bible says, was great. So we understand that the foundation of our life must be built on the Lord Jesus Christ. And this couple understands that when they say their vows, they're making a covenant to God. Now, Pastor Jane shares the heart of each couple to the congregation. The couple gives their scriptures and gives the things that are uh, special in their life. And she shares that with the congregation. And then she begins to unfold from the scriptures what God says about the plan that he has for every one of our lives. God has a plan. God has a purpose for every one of our lives. And she begins to unfold that in the word of God to us, how special it is. We understand that the devil has a plan of destruction and death in our life, but God has a plan of life and blessings and peace And we understand that this is for the rest of our life. And that foundation of God's plan goes into every area of our life. We don't have to be tormented. We don't have to be afraid. These couples start their life together in Jesus Christ, founded on the rock. When they get a little storm or something rough comes their way, they go to God. They go to Jesus and they understand that is where their help comes from. And that is a powerful foundation. So when these battles come and these storms come, they're going to stand. They will not fall because of their faith and the promises they made and the covenant they made to the Lord Jesus Christ. Isn't that a blessing to be able to start your life out that way? What a blessing from God to be able to start out a young person, a husband and wife in a foundation like that. God promises them that if they will trust him, their life will be blessed. And when God blesses them with children, the children are blessed because they have chosen God. They have chosen the plan of God for their life and not the plan of the devil. And these are things that we understand at the Word of Faith Fellowship that have been brought to us from the Word of God. So powerful and so special. Then when this couple gets up before the congregation, shares their testimonies, And we have the family that shares in song. We have the young people, the uh, junior bridesmaids and groomsmen that sing the songs of the Lord that the couple wanted. And it's so powerful. Then it's time with the witnesses, the, the groom and the bridesmaids to come in the lineup, the pastors and ministers on the platform. And the couple comes to the platform and they make their vows before God. Now, this is a very solemn solemn time, a very holy time, because it's when the heart of the husband and the heart of the wife express their vows that God has put on their heart before God, before each other, and before the congregation of the Lord. And it is beautiful. The words that they speak inspired by the Holy Spirit are so beautiful as they pledge their hearts to serve God together forever to go to Jesus forever, to walk in the house of the Lord and for their marriage to last a lifetime. And because we understand all the way through the Bible that a union, a marriage is a covenant before God. And we're going to see in a few minutes where God is witness. God is witness at our covenants of marriage. God is there. God is seeing, God is there, God is speaking as they are joined together as one. They make their vows to each other and then they exchange the ring, the symbol of the covenant as a small symbol of the mighty powerful love that God has put in their hearts for each other. And that is a precious time, a powerful time in God. 
and then they declare that they are husband and wife and that is absolutely beautiful and do you know what god has led us the first thing they do as husband and wife they take communion they take the lord's supper together frank or another minister frank webster another minister teaches on communion and what communion does in the life of someone who's received the Lord Jesus Christ, that it is a remembrance of the, his broken body for our sin and his shed blood for our sin. And the couple partakes of communion together as one. And it is beautiful. And then we're reminded of the prayer and we pray as a congregation, as a people, the couple, the ministers, all in a corporate prayer, blessing the union of God, the Spirit of God comes upon them and, and seals that covenant by the power of the Holy Spirit. And that couple is made one to be united in marriage together to do the will of God all the days of their life. And then I want to go back just a few steps because when Jane, Pastor Jane shares God's plan of marriage, she also shares a part of the covenant and then Sam, our pastor Sam, uh, shares the rest of the covenant. And that is found in the book of Ephesians chapter 5 about submission to each other and submission in marriage. And it's very, very powerful. And you can put that in your notes and look at that later as that is the basis of the covenant of marriage. But I, and, and of course, uh, Pastor Jane also emphasizes so strongly that everything we do, the foundation is love, because God is love, and love is from the Lord Jesus Christ. And she exhorts the couple and the congregation about 1 Corinthians 13, the chapter on love, that it's patient, it's kind, it bears up under anything, because we know that the love of God will never fail. And the Bible tells us it covers a multitude of sin. So that couple understands, the people of God understand that the bond in our lives, the bond in their life as husband and wife, is the love of God. But she gives the couples a very, very solemn and powerful warning from the Word of God. And I want you, if you have your Bible, turn with me to the book of Malachi. And it's, it starts in chapter 2. And it's a very strong warning to the priests of God. All of you, I'm sure, have read about Solomon. We know that Solomon had 700 wives and 300 concubines. You can read that in 1 Kings chapter 11. What happened to him? What happened to him? The man that built the temple of the Lord, one of the most majestic buildings of the ancient world. It's written about in other history books from the ancient world that the majesty of the Temple of Solomon, people came from all round about to see what the Lord had done. Even the queen from Sheba came to see what God had done. What happened to him? He was taught the ways of God. He was taught the things of God from his father David, his mother. What happened? Solomon the Bible says that Solomon's heart was turned away from God because he married strange women. God commanded from the Old Testament and in his word, you don't marry a heathen woman. The Bible says, can light and dark agree? How can light and dark flow together? You can't. And it says, don't be unequally yoked with an unbeliever. What happens to you? What happens? Some people think, oh, well, I'll marry him and they can serve God later. And you know what? A lot of times, a lot of times, later never comes. And it's a life of heartache and pain, a life of abuse. God doesn't want that for any human being. And the Word of God warns us in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, and look what it says. It says, and this you do. What were the priests doing? The priests in the book of Malachi, God's ministers, God's servants were in sin. And God's talking about their sin and he's telling them what they have to do because of the sin that they gave to. He said, this you do, God said, 
with double guilt. You cover the altar of the Lord with tears. You shed by your un by your unoffending wives divorced by you that you might take heathen wives. These priests and ministers of God left the wife of their youth, the wife of their covenant, the wife of their marriage in God and went after heathen women. And God said, don't do it. They mixed with heathen that don't know God, don't walk with God, worship idols and worship the devil. And God said in his word, don't do it. God said, when you go into that land, do not marry their sons and their daughters because they will lead you away from me. They will take you away from me. And God said, don't do it. And God's revealed in his word to Jane, our pastor, and to all of us that have studied the word of God and take the scriptures in the counsel of God. There's not any other reason for divorce except if that mate is gonna take you to serve other gods. And that will bring a marital separation. Listen to what it says. It says, with your own weeping and crying out because the Lord does not regard your offering anymore or accept it with favor at your hand. God wasn't listening to them. They were cut off from God because of their sin. And, and they say, what? yet they ask, why does God reject it? And God listened to the answer. Because the Lord was witness to the covenant made at your marriage between you and the wife of your youth against whom you have dealt treacherously and to whom you were faithless. Yet she is your companion and the wife of your covenant made by your marriage vows. And did not God make you and your wife one flesh? Did not one, make you and preserve your spirit alive. Why did God make the two one? Because he sought a godly offspring from your union. Therefore, take heed to yourselves and let no one deal treacherously and be faithless to the wife of his youth. And then it goes on to tell us that God hates divorce and marital separation. And him who covers his garment, his wife with violence and then he warns us again. Therefore, keep a watch upon your spirit that it may be controlled by my spirit that you deal not treacherously and faithlessly with your marriage mate. The word of God is very clear. And it comes as a warning and Jane shares with the couple and the congregation how God has taught her to guard her spirit always checking to be sure she's in 1 Corinthians 13, that the love of God is there. Love for everyone, love for your mate, love for your children. Keep a guard on your spirit by the love of God working in your heart, working in your being, so that all you do is motivated out of love. So we see here that God does hate divorce. And Jesus talked about divorce, and it was because of the hardness of heart that God allowed a bill of divorcement during the time of Moses because of the hardness of heart. Now, I understand that there are some people that leave a marriage because they want the world. They want sin, and their mate won't go into sin with them. So they divorce and leave because they want the world. It's very clear. You can understand it. They want sin. They don't want to walk with God, and the mate is faithful to God and does not want to go into sin. You can't live in a divided house. Jesus said a divided house is going to fall. So Jesus answered the Pharisees and told them and even brought back to them their own sayings and their own ways with God. But it's not the truth of God's word. The only reason that you can see in the word of God for divorce, it can't be for unclean and fornication and unfaithfulness only. If that was the case, Jesus said, if you look upon a woman, you commit adultery. The whole world would be divorced because people give to sin. And when that happens, we repent. So that's not what Jesus was saying. Many couples that I've known all of my life had the pain and heartache of unfaithfulness in their marriages and even adultery and fornication. But you know what? The forgiving power of God was greater than their sin. 
and God forgave, God healed, and they repented of their sin. They did not divorce. They got back on track and gave their hearts to Jesus again and walked with Jesus together. You know, it's been amazing in situations I've been involved in where it's, you know, comes to the light that somebody's in adultery. They've been seeing somebody else. And all of a sudden the wife, that's it. I've had it. I'm leaving. And here the man's been doing it for five years. And he comes to the light and says, I'm, I'm doing this and I don't want to do it anymore. I want to repent. Can the wife forgive? Can the husband forgive? If we're New Testament believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we forgive. We forgive sin. You know, all of our life, things are going to happen in our lives to those around us. And things that can seem, at the time, totally heartbreaking. They can seem like you want to give up. What good is it? What use is it? But when the grace of Almighty God and the power of the cross of Christ that bore our sin and our shame, our sin and our heartache on that cross so that we could be healed, we could be forgiven. And I've seen over the years, I've seen so many marriages healed. So many marriages. And they're walking with God today. They got rid of that sin. They drove it out. They got deliverance. They got prayer. They repented. And they're walking in Jesus today. But God says clearly here, when you bring that world, you go after other gods, you serve idols. He says, divorce them. And if you finish reading Malachi and in the book of Nehemiah and Ezra, you'll see that's what happened. They came before the Lord with their sin of those heathen women who had never served God, didn't want to repent. They loved their heathen ways. And God said, divorce them because they will lead you into sin and lead you to go to hell. And we can't serve any foreign gods. We can't listen to any other voices but the voice of the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's a holy place in our heart. It's a choice of our heart. It's a choice of our will. That's why Proverbs warns us, guard your heart, for out of it flow the issues of life. When you let demon powers into your life, when you partake of sin, it brings that into your heart, into your life. And we have to repent of our sin. We have to take our will back and surrender it to the Lord Jesus Christ. And in our hearts and our lives comes a work of grace, a work of repentance, a work by the blood of Jesus Christ and the power of God. He changes us. He transforms us. So what God has shown us about the weddings and the word of God as the foundation, it keeps us from divorce. Some of those couples pledge before God to their wife or to their husband. We will never stray away. And, and they pledge to each other. If I stray or you stray, we will bring each other back to the covenant of God and to the covenant of God's will. And these are the foundations they begin their life on. I was married very young, 18 years old, and Todd was 19 years old. And within the first year of marriage, we had our first daughter, Jessica. You've heard on the programs, and she sings on the programs. And we have another daughter, Rebecca. We've been married for 45 years. When we came to the Word of Faith Fellowship, I was 27 years old. Todd was 28. And we've had a work of the Lord in our hearts. Marriage is a treasure. It's a gift from God. And it's, it's, it's so special as a gift from God's word that two people, two individuals, totally different, can come together by the Spirit of God in the union of marriage and become one flesh. That is a miracle. And that only happens through the Lord Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's only maintained because of the Word of God, the fear of the Lord that's in the couple's heart to walk with Jesus for the rest of their life. There's so many divorces because the foundation is not the Lord Jesus Christ and his word. It's such a blessing to be with you today. And we just got to share a little bit from the word of God about the weddings and about what God does in our couples. And it's, it's just such a blessing. The whole church at the end of the wedding, we're exhorted by the family and the parents to please pray for the couple, uphold them, lift, it, lift them up in prayer, reach out to them. And so it's a very, very special time. And we honor the work of God's word and the work of God's spirit in our weddings. 
So we pray that you have a wonderful day. We pray for you every day. We love you. We love coming to the airways, to the radio programs. Go to our website, wordoffaithfellowship.org, and look at the different radio programs that go way back, and you can look at all different kinds of topics. Have a wonderful day, and we'll be back again.